All right, well, now we go down the, well, not Russian, but Eastern Alliance side of Era 1, uh, ultimately reaching the Object 165. Uh, I really love the Object 140 in World War II. It's, it was one of my earlier Tier 10s, and I just always enjoyed the run-and-gun DPM play style. Um, this is just like that on steroids. So the Object 165 is a T-62 variant, I guess, early on. Um, so you get better everything than the T-54 that comes before it. You get better, you know, DPM that pans and hits more, more hit points, more mobility. Um, this tank was great even when I marked it. It was pre-light tank introduction, though. And I'll tell you, I mean, as much as I love the M48A5 PI, I think that the introduction of the light tanks may have made this stronger um, in many situations because it has higher DPM, it has more mobility, traverse, everything, you can get around better. So I haven't played this much since I marked it, but I did take it out once against light tanks and actually ended up having a really good match because I was just able to get around and counter them. So um, the tank likes to catch on fire if you get shot in the face, so be careful about that. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty solid. Um, you know, it's it's like the quintessential Russian medium. As we get into Era 2, you're going to see that, um, that it starts with the T-62, which kind of stinks. And then you get into the heavy. So, to me, this is actually like the top alpha tank of, of the whole Russian experience in the game. Um, mostly because even though the T-62... I mean, probably could beat it because it's got more hit points to an Era 2 tank. This, this is top of the heat. You definitely feel that power. So, um, you know, I'm being a little cheeky here. I can see people scooting across, take a couple shots. Uh, you know, watch the guy get blown up in front of me. That's great. <laughs> um, not going so well, is it? Right. So, I don't have too much cover here. I mean, there's some people in B or D1, excuse me. That's kind of a tough place to be. You really can get picked off without being able to see your shoe. Uh, early on in Cold War, I used to go there and found it's not a very good position. But where I am here, it's, it's a lot more flexible. And so we're going to see what we can do. Gonna take some shots. Not ideal. It's a, little, it's a little dangerous to peek out onto behind that wall, but I was trying to see what I can do. Um, they're pushing. I bounce. It's not the best thing ever, but um, I'm going to back up. I'm going to get out. That's, again, a nice thing about this position is that you have a lot of flexibility. See um, see where we can go as not to get completely destroyed. Uh, we're down two tanks, but it's still early, so we're going to see if we can bring that back in. Um, one of the things about this tank you need to keep in mind versus the... 48. 48 will bounce a lot. Uh, the armor is actually very reliable, especially the when you get the top turret and you're, you, know, you have all that gun depression. This can bounce, especially if you're against lower tier tanks, or, you know, in the era. But it, you know, it, consider it like um, a perk, not. You, know, you don't want to rely on it because <laughs> it tends not to be there when you need it. So you really got to be careful when you're poking. It should be, you should be using your mobility. Um, this continues to not go great, but we're gonna, we're just gonna be patient. That's the other thing in Cold War. A lot of people go at Cold War is very campy. It can be, I think we got to keep in mind though, is that in Cold War you need to be, you need to be patient because True Vision, if you just drive out, you get punished really hard. So what you want to do is just put yourself in positions where you can shell out damage without taking it. Oh, that was a lucky shot. <laughs> it's Cold War. Um, it is almost even, somehow. Just, you know, it's good. We're going to um, sit here, I guess, try and shoot this guy. Shoot the bridge instead. Um, this tank is actually really accurate. Oh, that was a nice shot by him. But, uh, you know, the thing is, like, you're shooting 500 to 1,000 meters sometimes in Cold War, so try not to get too salty when you miss if you're shooting from that far away. Um, I'm going to swing around. The, um, it looks like most of their team is in the ABC line, so I'm going to try and swing around here. I'm not really having a great match. Certainly not 
in marking territory. The mark for it is about 5,000. So, oh, that's a good fire. Um, the mark is less than the 48. I, the 48 was a little more challenging to mark. Um, and I think that just is because of the time that I was doing it, that the 48 was the more competitive tank. Um, like I said, with light tanks and mobility becoming more important, I think that uh, this tank, I don't know if the numbers have risen, but you know, we'll see. So now I'm surrounded. This is great. But again, I'm going to use that DPM. I'm going to miss because I'm dumb. Not the best. They're going to miss too, so I'm going to take him out. I got another one shot. I'm going to prioritize one shots here because I am, you know, I was outgunned. And now I have this guy who's just sitting there. And he does pen me because, you know, again, like I said, the armor on this isn't the best. But I also see that he backs up so I can start pushing now. So, three verse, you know, but eight. Not great. <laughs> Not great at all. And I'm running out of hit points. So, and I bounce. So the M46A1, oh my god, that tank will bounce so many shots even. Even in the 48, it's annoying. So I don't have the gun depression. I don't want to mess around with this guy. I want to get into a position where I can take advantage of the strengths of this tank without being hampered by the weaknesses. So rather than screw around with him, I'm just going to move. And I'm going to go around the back flank and try and link up with this other guy. And uh, at least, you know, we'll have two. Or at least that's my thought. But then I see opportunities. I don't want to pass up opportunities. It looks like my tank over my, you know, my um, teammate is doing a pretty good job of staying in a position where uh, where he's somewhat protected. I wish that had, um, you know, obviously penned, but I'm just going to take him out from far. Um, this is getting spicy, but you notice the damage count starting to climb, which is what I need. So we'll take that shot. We're trying to get people into one-shot zone so that our, our uh, friend there can help without taking damage, because again, I'm in a position now where if I get shot, it's probably going to be in the front. I really don't want to catch on fire. This guy's worrying me because he's full health, but, you know, what are you going to do? Miss. That's what we'll do. <laughs> Womp. All right, so now they're starting to close in. Uh, this is a really bad situation for my teammate. I'm, I'm hoping he backs up and gets away. Get a cheeky shot and he doesn't. So now it's just me. Don't think we're gonna win this. You remember, you can still mark even if you even if you lose. <laughs> so um, just gonna harvest as much as I can now. Uh, I'm I think pretty close. Four thousand direct. Of course, they just changed the MOE math. Nobody knows how it works anymore. So who can say? It's like magic. But like I said, it was about five thousand was the um, consensus when I did this. So I think I'm in good shape. And uh, I'm just going to try and get a little bit more damage. And I'm not really worried about the win at this point. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of hit points. There are some pretty healthy tanks, and I just want to run into somebody and, you know, get up to that 5,000. We miss, which is a shame. He doesn't miss, which is also a shame. But, you know, we're gonna get, if I can get one more shot in, should be good. And I do, but I blow up, but it puts me over 5,000. So, an explosive ending, indeed. Um, so, you know, as with many of my three mark videos, it's not during a win, <laughs> but what can you do? Um, I really like this tank. I, you know, I haven't played it much, although I'm hoping some of my friends start playing Cold War and then I'll help them grind through it, probably using this. I mean, I'm doing the light tank line too, which is arguably a little bit overpowered if you know what you're doing in the Bulldog, but those three marks look good. I think this is a great line. I think it's an easy line to grind. You can make good silver in it, even with just tech tree options, which is nice. You know, continuing that trend in Cold War. So I would say, uh, you know, go for it. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. See you out there.